Welcome to Day 15 of the Waking Up Course. Again, just sit however is comfortable. And you might gently close your eyes. And then rest your mind wide open. Listening to sounds. Noticing sensations in the body. Feeling the breath come and go, either at the nose or at the abdomen or chest. Just let your awareness be the space in which all of these things appear. It is, in fact, already the space in which all things simply appear. And if you notice any mood or coloring to your attention, if you feel sleepy or restless, anxious, peaceful, bored, any feeling tone, that too, where do you feel it? Feel it as a pattern of energy. Notice that consciousness is prior to it. This, too, is just appearing in consciousness. Sleepiness itself, feeling that you're about to fall asleep, is also a sensation appearing in consciousness. And that which is aware of restlessness or sleepiness is not itself restless or sleepy. Consciousness doesn't actually take the shape of what it knows. See if you can feel that. Aware of the sensations of your face and your head. And rather than feel that consciousness is in your head or behind your face, notice that it is in fact the other way around. The sensations of having a face or head are appearing in consciousness. And they're appearing in the same place that sounds are appearing and thoughts. The sensation of having a face or a head or a body is a place where you're hearing the sound of my voice. I 
there is only one place to notice anything, and that's in consciousness. Rest as that space. And if you notice that you've been lost in thought and entirely forgotten about the practice of meditation, there's no need to judge that moment. That, again, is just another moment of being lost in thought. Just start again. It happens to the thought itself and rest as the space in which It's disappeared. And observe whatever comes next. Sounds, sensations. Another thought. Eventually thoughts themselves can become objects of meditation. There are times when the practice becomes stable enough that the arising of a thought is no longer synonymous with losing the thread of mindfulness. There are times when it feels like there is no possibility of losing that thread. There is nothing to be distracted. Again, there's only one space in which everything appears. What could be distracted from what? In the last minute of this session, just begin again. See if you can pay really precise attention to whatever's appearing. Well, you've been at this for 15 days. This is a landmark of sorts. As you can tell, the practice keeps developing. I keep adding new elements. And we're now getting into territory in these sessions where the meditational field of experience, sounds, sensations, moods, thoughts, everything in principle is a fit object of meditation. And there's nothing which is, by its very nature, 
a distraction here. And I hope it's clear that you're not trying to prevent thoughts or moods from arising. You just want to pay close attention to whatever appears. The full field of consciousness is the context of mindfulness. And I'll be adding exercises that interrogate various parts of it and that put into question certain features of our experience that seem worth taking a closer look at. But the content on this side of the course can become more evergreen and you can use it again and again. And I'll see you back here for the next session. Welcome to day 16 of the Waking Up Course. Again, just find a posture that's comfortable. And you might gently close your eyes. Breaths. For the beginning of this session, focus as precisely on the breath as you can. And you might add a mental note in your mind, either the word in and out, or you can count each breath. Keep mind very soft. It's just a way of recommitting your attention to the breath at each moment, beginning and end. And rather than try to get closer 
to the breath with your attention. Just notice that it appears all on its own in the space of consciousness. There really is no getting closer. And there's no place from which you would get closer. Everything is just appearing as it is. Sensations, sounds, And the moment you notice you've been lost in thought and have entirely forgotten the purpose of sitting here, just notice the thought itself unraveling and disappearing without judgment. And begin again. As you feel the breath come and go, become aware of all the other sensations that are appearing in and as your body. There's really a cloud of sensation, tingling, pressure, temperature, For the last minute of this session, see if you can make your mind as big as possible. 
Don't focus on anything. Don't restrict your attention to anything. Just let your mind be wide open like the sky. Well, once again, thank you for the efforts you're making here. I wish you the best of luck integrating this kind of attention into the rest of your day. And I'll see you back here for the next session of Waking Up. Welcome to Day 17 of the Waking Up course. As you get comfortable in your seat, you might keep your eyes open for the beginning of this session and take a few deep breaths and just let yourself settle into the feeling of resting in space. And as you gaze in front of you, just let your gaze be as wide as possible. No need to focus on anything in particular. Just stare into space with soft eyes feeling the breath come and go Listen to the sounds in the room arising and passing away. And as you stare into your visual field, take a moment to look for what is looking. See if you can look back with your attention at the one who is seen. Now this may sound paradoxical, but see what happens the moment you look. There was a teacher named Douglas Harding who wrote a book titled On Having No Head. And the exercise he recommended to his students was to gaze 
at whatever is before you and look for your own head. Notice that your head is not one of the things you see. What is it like to see the world and simultaneously notice that your head is not appearing in it? See if that does anything to your sense of awareness. Where his head was supposed to be, there was just the world. See if you can be mindful of that in each moment. And now gently close your eyes and pay attention to this feeling that you might have that you're now inside your head, that your attention is in something. But again, what you're calling the sensations you get from your skin, the muscles in your face, all of that is appearing in consciousness. That which is aware is not inside of something. Everything is in it. See if you can feel that. Open your eyes again. And ask yourself what has changed. Is there a sense that the world comes rushing in? That space just got bigger? You might play with this, opening and closing your eyes periodically. Is there really a change? There's a change in the contents of consciousness, clearly. There are things you can see with your eyes open that you can't with your eyes closed. But you still have a visual field in both cases. When you close your eyes, your visual field doesn't disappear. All of this changing are the contents of consciousness. And more and more as we proceed in this practice, we want to be looking to see if the feeling that consciousness has a center, that there's a meditator in the middle of each moment of meditation, thoughts, a seer of sights, a hearer of sounds. We'll be looking into that, that feeling that awareness emanates from a single point inside the head. And in some ways, this is even easier to do with eyes open because we use vision to define ourselves into our environment more than we do with the other senses. There's a clear feeling that most of us have, 
most of the time, that we are behind our face, looking out at the world through our eyes. But as you look out at the world in this moment, see if that feeling is true. You might look to see if there's any evidence that you are behind your face at this moment. And the moment you notice you're lost in thought, come back to this exercise. Keep an attention very wide with our eyes closed. And seeing if this feeling of being inside the head survives scrutiny. In the last minute of this session, just give up all efforts and notice whatever appears on its own. Well, today I introduced a slightly different exercise, and they'll be coming from time to time, because it's good to use this growing facility with mindfulness to engage a kind of structured analysis of experience. You can definitely precipitate certain insights by doing something a little more directed than just noticing whatever happens to arise. And if you're interested, you might get that book, I'm Ahead, by Douglas Harding, because he, in a way that was quite unique to him, developed analogies and exercises that can provoke an insight into the illusoriness of subject-object perception. It's not to say that Consciousness isn't arising in the brain. It's not making any claims about your mind being coterminous with the rest of the... What Harding was doing was showing that this sense of being inside the head from the side of experience changes when you actually look to see if it's true. And as you play with that exercise you might find that a very expansive and centerless sense of what awareness is can emerge in place of this feeling that you would otherwise call I. 
Again, thank you for your practice, and I'll see you back here for the next session of Waking Up. Welcome to Day 18 of the Waking Up Course. So yesterday we engaged a fairly structured analysis of the feeling of being inside one's head. I think we'll continue there for a few minutes. So as you get comfortable in your seat, you might keep your eyes open. And just gaze into space. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. Could be your desk. You could be gazing out a window. You could be staring at the ground in front of your feet. Whatever you see, Notice that what you actually see is a field of color and light and shadow. And it's true to say that the objects you see are defined in their separateness by concepts. See if you can relax your sense of the discreteness of any. Just see an undifferentiated field of color and light. Just as you would relax your sense that you can feel the shape of your hands as you attend more and more closely to the raw sensations of tingling and pressure and temperature. So too with your visual field. Just see it as a play of light. And rather than move your eyes across that space, keep them steady and see it all at once. Let your vision go very wide. It's as though you're a mirror, simply reflecting this unified scene of color and light. Now, as you gaze on this visual field, simply rest as the space in which it and all others can Notice that your head is not appearing in this space. It's like there's a unified sphere in which all perceptions are appearing. You might still feel that you have a head. You might feel the sensations of your face or your eyes. But those two are just appearing in this same context. It's 
Let your mind go very wide. Keep dropping back. And recognize that you are this prior condition, subjectively, in which to be noticed, arises, and is noticed. Take a moment to feel any tension in your body and see if you can deliberately relax. You might take a few deep breaths. And just release any tension you might feel. And whatever it can't be, just notice. Consciousness is the prior condition in which it too is appearing. And the moment you notice that your mind has been captured by thought, unwittingly, there's no need to judge yourself. Just observe what happens in that instant. That too is part of the practice. and come back to your visual field and to sensations in the body and to sounds. And in the last minute of the session, close your eyes and pay very careful attention to the breath. See if you can stay with the breath continuously. Once again, thank you for taking the time to practice. I think you'll find as we continue in these days and weeks and months and years that doing this even for a few minutes a day 
can make a profound difference in all those other moments where it is still true to say that it is just your mind that you're experiencing in each moment. It's not that the world doesn't exist, but your every encounter with the world and with other people happens and as this conscious mind. So getting clear about what that is like intrinsically and how we distort it, perturb it, each moment by reacting and judging and at bottom thinking incessantly without knowing it. That really is the the great project and adventure of living an examined life. And to that end, I will see you back here soon for the next session of Waking Up. Welcome to day 19 of the Waking Up course. Once again, find a comfortable posture. And you might take a few deep breaths. And gently close your eyes. And let your mind come to rest on the sensation of sitting. And you might sit a little straighter than you were. It's interesting that the posture itself can aid or detract from your awareness. And now just bring your attention to the sensations of breathing. And see if you can be very attentive to what the mind is like the moment my voice intrudes. What is that first moment like in a thought? Do you judge yourself in the next instant? Just become aware of that automaticity. And how long does it take you to come back with a fresh sense of awareness? This really is a journey without a goal. The goal is simply to notice what ever is appearing in each moment, not to change it, not to improve it, not to get rid of it, just notice whatever is happening all on its own. This might be the only period of your life during each day where you can truly give up any sense of struggle.
as you sit here feeling the sensations of the breath and the energy of your body, letting thoughts come and go, I'd like you to bring to mind someone in your life who you care deeply about, but with whom you have a very simple, uncomplicated relationship. This could be a friend or a colleague, someone you respect and admire, against whom you have no grievances. And when you find that person, just picture him or her. Picture them truly happy. Picture all of what they're seeking in life being attained. Picture them healthy. And consciously wish that for them. As you picture them in your mind, you might actually think the thoughts, may you be happy. May you be free from suffering. May you be peaceful. Use phrases like that or any others that come to you to direct this feeling of well-wishing. The Buddhist term is loving-kindness, otherwise known as metta from the Pali. A feeling of love which is just a desire for that person to be happy, to be free from suffering. Picture this person as clearly as you can. It might still be a vague image or a fleeting one, but just get a sense of who you're thinking about and direct this feeling. May you be happy. See if you can connect emotionally with the fact that you really do want that person to be happy. That is what you want. Without reservation, And see if you can notice what that does to your mind. You might consciously put a smile in your mind and let this feeling of loving kindness grow. For the last minute of the session, take stock of how you feel. Is there a feeling tone to consciousness in this moment? 
has wishing someone well done anything to the character of your mind? Is there a smoothness or openness? There certainly can be. You concentrate on that feeling of loving kindness. The sense of expansiveness can grow to a point that is quite remarkable. But now for the last minute, just rest, keeping your mind wide open without making any effort at all. Well, so today I introduced a practice called metta. That's the official Buddhist name. And the mental state that is the goal of that practice, this feeling of loving kindness that is quite distinct from romantic attachment or any kind of complicated or self-directed entanglement with another person. It really is just this unimpeded well-wishing toward another, that they be happy, that they be free from suffering. And there are people who do this practice quite one-pointedly for weeks and months and even years at a time. And unlike Vipassana, which is what we've been training in primarily, there really is a goal. There is a single mental state that you are trying to achieve and deepen and expand and not let go of. And this is a, a classically a concentration practice. And as I said, the effect can be quite amazing. So as we continue in this course, you might experiment with adding even just a few moments of metta practice, because it can connect you to one of the primary purposes of meditation. After all, we're not doing this merely for ourselves. We're doing it so that we can be better with others. We want better relationships. We want a better world. And it's the recognition that we always are in relationship and in the world that makes meditation practice an intrinsically social project, even though we do it in isolation very often. If this is good for anything, it has to be good for our being in the world with others. And bringing in metta, however occasionally, can make that fact quite vivid. Again, thank you for your practice. I'll see you back here for the next session of Waking Up. Any of the Waking Up course. Again, take your seat and gently close your eyes and just feel your body resting in space. Feel the sensations of gravity pulling you into your seat. And let your awareness be very wide, simply receiving all the raw sensations. Tingling and pressure, vibration, 
itching, pain, whatever it is, pleasant or unpleasant. And in this, pay special attention to pleasant and unpleasant, the feeling tone of each experience. For the next 10 minutes, see if you can cease to care at all about pleasant and unpleasant. Just let everything be as it is. The thoughts come and go, sensations in the body, sounds, and if there's anything even slightly unpleasant, pain somewhere, a feeling of restlessness, frustration, doubt, just notice that too. Simply be like space in which that appears. And so too with any pleasant sensations or thoughts or emotions. Just let your awareness reflect all of these things equally. There's nothing to hold on to. There's nothing to push away. The moment you notice you're lost in thought, just begin again. Begin again with a bright and clear awareness.
Again, notice if your awareness is being colored by liking or disliking anything, sensations, thoughts, the feeling that the meditation went well or badly. See if you can unwind all of that in this instant. Just drop it and be nakedly aware of raw sensation. In the final minute of the session, pay the breath as clearly as you can. Follow it from the moment it arises until the moment it passes away. Okay. Well, once again, I hope you're finding that taking just a few minutes out of your day to do this is quite unlike not doing it. It's certainly unlike never doing it, which is where most people are. More and more, I think you'll see as you make a habit of this practice that this is quite a revolutionary thing to do to even be aware that liking and not liking an experience is a separable component of the experience and that you need not always, in every case, be taken in by it. That is remarkable insight into the nature and plasticity of consciousness. One thing that training in mindfulness can show you is that that which is aware of unpleasant sensation is the same and feels the same as that which is aware of pleasant sensation. There really is a kind of equanimity intrinsic to consciousness that can be quite liberating to discover. And if it's appropriate to say there is a goal to this practice, that is pretty close to the center of it to simply give up this automatic 
struggle we live with moment by moment and acquire an ability to leave things as they are at a time, to punctuate our relentless search for happiness with real equipoise and well-being, to give up the search by merely paying attention. And to that end, I'll see you back here soon for the next session of Waking Up. Welcome to Day 21 of the Waking Up Course. Once again, sit however you're comfortable and close your eyes and gaze into the darkness of your closed eyes. Notice that your visual field is and simply stare into that space. And see if you can notice any detail there. It's not quite dark. component is not confined by the sensation of your eyelids. You can feel your eyelids, of course, but your visual field is not behind them. It's actually quite undefined. Simply gaze into that space. Cloudless sky. And as you do that, remain watchful for the next thought that appears, whether it's a phrase or sent spoken with the voice of your mind or an image. Just rest your mind, gaze into your visual field, and wait for the next thought. See if you can catch it the moment it stirs. If you notice anything, look for the thinker. Look for your mind. Look for where the thoughts come from. Is there anything to find there? Just to make you more sensitive to this process, I'd like you to consciously produce a thought now. As you gaze into your visual field, I would like you to remember some moment from earlier today. Could be anything. Just some visual impression that has left a residue in your mind. Simply flash that on the screen of your awareness. How did something look earlier today when you saw it? Do that a few more times. And continue to rest your gaze in the sky of the mind.
If your visual field has grown indistinct, see if you can pay closer attention. It's not like vision turns off. It's there all the while. Simply gaze into that space. I'd like you now to consciously elaborate that space with more visual imagery. Think of anything you remember the sight of. It could be a building or a room in your home or the face of someone you know or a photograph. Just flash a few images into that space. And notice that you can't choose these images before they appear on their own. You don't know what you'll think. Think of an object, any object, and visualize it. Where is that? Where is a thought? And are you doing any of this? Think of an object. Where are you in this process? And now become aware of this of sitting. Feel the pressure, the heaviness, the warmth, the tension, whatever you can notice. Feel the breath coming and going. But see also if you can notice the next thought, the moment it arises. And watch what happens to it. Is there a thinker that is making thoughts come and go? Or do they simply come and go? In the last minute of the session, don't do anything at all. Just leave everything in its own place. Well, that was a more directed session than normal. And you might return to it. It's definitely different emphasizing your visual field in that way. 
And I think it can be useful because it, for many of us, it can put us in closer contact with this process by which thoughts appear and disappear. And I'll see you back here for the next session of Waking Up.